This man, which is later on going to be recognized as Imam al Haram, he's a man who is going to be known as Sheikh al Hijaz. He's a man who will be known as Sheikh al Islam. He's a man who will be known as Al Imam al Rabbani. He's a man of the highest caliber in terms of his asceticism. He's a man who is a known Gnostic within the Muslim Ummah. But this man was not always a pious man. This man was quite the opposite. He was very, very impious. He wasn't just not religious. He was very far away from the religion. He was a man who happened to be, as the books say, shatir, a highway robber. He would steal, he was a bandit, and he would loot for a living. And he was not just your average highway robber. He was known to be the highway robber of that town on the main road between Sarakas and between Abiwat. They would mention his name and they would remember nothing but evil. The life of Fudayl ibn Iyad al-Tamimi, rahimahullah wa it begins in the year 107, approximately after the Hijrah. He was born in the city of Samarkand. Areas which at that time, second century of Islam, were not necessarily fully Islamic. What I mean by that is, Islam was relatively new to that, those areas at that time. So where did this man come from? If Islam is new, was he born to the converts there? The answer is no. He was born to a man who had traveled from Iraq likely for the purposes of liberating these lands. We have people trying to revolt against the currently formed government at that time. In the midst of all of this turmoil, Fudayl ibn Iyad loses his father. We don't know how he lost his father. He was a man who happened to be, as the books say, shatir, a highway robber. He would steal, he was a bandit and he would loot for a living. One night, Fudayl ibn Iyad al-Tamimi was chasing after women. He really loved this specific woman and he was trying to get to her room, literally climbing the walls. But as he was doing this, suddenly he heard someone reciting a verse which said, is it not time for the people who have believed that their hearts begin to become humble for the sake of Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Somehow, in some way, this verse affected the man who had affected in a negative way the lives of hundreds of people who would cross between Abi Ward and Sarakas. But Allah Azza wa allowed this verse to go through and break the shackles of his heart and get to the depth of his heart and affect this man in a positive way. And at that moment, Fudayl ibn Iyad got up off of the walls and he started to climb down and he said, Yes, O oh my Lord, قد آن, it is now time for the hearts of those people who have believed for them to hum be humbled for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Fudayl ibn Iyad descended and he went and searched for a place where there was not that much noise, where it was dark, a deserted area. And he wanted to spend the night in pondering, thinking about his life. And as he's sitting, suddenly he starts to hear people speaking in the background and he realizes that he's not alone in this area. He was looking for an area where he could seclude himself. There's a group of people saying, let's move, let's get going, let's move, let's not stay here. Because he says that Fudayl ibn Iyad must be out and about, it's the night time and he must be attempting to try to rob people on the street. And there it is, Fudayl ibn Iyad is right next to them in the darkness and, he, and they don't realize. So at that moment, Fudayl had a moment of truth with himself. And he spoke to himself and he said, I have committed sins at night and groups of Muslims happen to be afraid of me. It seems, and he's speaking to himself, it seems that Allah has only brought me here so that I may take heed from what they're saying and stop. It seems that Allah has only brought me here and made me hear this verse that a man was reciting who I know not of. He's only brought me here and made me hear all of these things so that I may take heed. And at that moment, he made his tawbah 
to Allah Azza wa Jal and he told Allah the sign of his tawbah. Oh Allah, I have repented back to you and I have made my tawbah to you, oh Allah, my repentance to you that I will live by your house in Mecca. Now these people, they're still afraid of Fudayl. So Fudayl emerges from the darkness before them. And he says, O oh people, I am Fudayl. Go and travel in your journeys. And he says, By Allah, I will strive from this point onwards to never disobey Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And we have in some of the traditions that Fudayl actually even fed the people at that moment. He, in that night, he decided that as a compensation for everything evil that he had done, he had an opportunity to repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he took that opportunity. Allah Azza wa Jal granted Fudayl ibn Iyad the tawfiq to be able to seize the deal and the opportunity. And he made tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. And he repented to Allah. After he's made his tawbah, he's repented back to Allah. He realizes that he needs to make some changes. First and foremost, by making a change of location. He left Abi Ward and he went to Iraq. He went to a totally distinct location. Away from his entire society, his friends, his social circle. And now he's in a totally new place. So he can start a new life. When Fudayl made this journey, we noticed that Fudayl goes through difficulty. Fudayl ibn Iyad happens to be in Jami' al-Kufa, the main masjid of Kufa. Three days he has nothing to eat nor to drink. Fudayl ibn Iyad is going through difficulty. Now after this difficulty, ease comes. And Fudayl now starts to begin his journey for knowledge. He is extremely spirited. He has a strong resolve. He is very conscious about what he is going to be doing. Why? Because he has newly come to Islam in terms of the practice of Islam. So he started to learn and he learned from the greatest tabi'een amidst the scholars of the Kufa and Hijaz. He learned from A'mash. He learned from Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Ansari who was from the teachers of Imam Malik. He learned from Muhammad ibn Ishaq. He learned from Ja'far al-Sadiq as well who is a Sunni Imam. He learned from these great scholars of Islam. And he also became a great scholar himself because he learned and accurately transmitted knowledge. So from amidst his students were Sufyan ibn Uyayna, names that you've all heard. Sufyan al-Thawri, remember, imagine a highway robber later on goes to become the teacher of Sufyan ibn Uyayna. Of Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, of Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Qattan, of Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, of al-Shafi'i himself, of Bishr al-Hafi, of al sariya al-Saqati, and many, many other great scholars of Islam, this man becomes a teacher for all of them. So this is why when you see someone doing evil, never ever look down upon them. Wallahi, Allah Azza wa Jal may take the good that you have away from you because you look down upon them and give them much, much more than what you have. Fudayl ibn Iyad al-Tamimi is a person who went from that lifestyle chase, chasing after women, evil, robberies, looting, highway robberies to now being mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. His hadith is found in Sahih Muslim. His hadith is found in Sunan al-Nasai. His hadith is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi. Fudayl now becomes a teacher. The gatherings of Fudayl happen to be very unique gatherings. You see, every scholar has a different touch within their gatherings. He has a balance between spirituality, between knowledge and between etiquette. And that's why the students of knowledge of the time of Fudayl ibn Iyad, they started chasing after Fudayl. So much so that Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, one of the greatest scholars of the early times, he used to call Fudayl ibn Iyad the teacher of goodness. An example in which Fudayl ibn Iyad teaches his students the etiquette, the behavior, behavior and the manners, and he gives them hikmah, and he was a very wise man, is one day he was sitting with his students. He says, if I were to be granted one dua, which I knew were to be definitely accepted, I would pray for no one except the imam, except for the leader. So his students say, why? He responds, he says, if I were to make it for myself, the impact will only be upon myself. But if I make it for the imam, the people and the country at, the, at large or the countries at large and the cities at large under his care will all be reformed. 
And he further explained, and he says, look, as for the reformation of the countries, when the Imam happens to be a just and pious ruler, then people will feel comforted, so much so that they will invest within society. The second thing is, he says, that if the Imam is pious himself, he will notice that the need of the people is within the Qur'an and the Sunnah, and that will give him the incentive to ensure that people are being taught their religion. So at that moment, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, he got up and that is when he gave him the title, O oh, Teacher of Goodness. Now Fudayl ibn Iyad, he soon becomes a critic as well. What is his criticism? He, sa- he feels that some scholars of his time are perhaps not practicing what they preach. Among the things he says is that it used to be said, a person continues to be good. So long as whenever he says something, he says it for Allah Azza wa Jal. And whenever he does something, he does it for Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And he also starts to divide the ulama of his time within two categories. He says there are those scholars who are ulama ul dunya, they are scholars of the dunya. And there are those scholars who happen to be the scholars of the hereafter as well. And these are the ones who practice what they preach. Because of this critical behavior of Fudayl ibn Iyad at tamimi he feels the need now to seclude himself from society. He secluded himself because he was afraid that what he is doing is not really for Allah Azza wa Jal. Just as he was being critical of others, that doesn't mean he wasn't being critical of himself as well. However, the more Fudayl ibn Iyad runs away from public, the more people run after Fudayl ibn Iyad. So much so that Fudayl begins to say, I wish there was a rumor that would spread that I have died so people stop following me. So Fudayl, sometimes he would not pray at night. He would sit there and ponder. So much so that one day he started in night speaking to himself. He grabbed his beard and he started to cry. And his tears welled so much that the soil below Fudayl started to become wet. And Fudayl said, you, O Fudayl, used to be a fasiq when you were a child, when you were younger. You used to be malicious, you used to be an evildoer when you were younger. And now at your older age, you have become a person who shows off to people. By Allah, someone who shows off to people is even more greater of a sinner than a person who is, who is what? Who is sinful. You see, Fudayl ibn Iyad at tamimi was also criticized. Just as he criticized people, one of the reasons why Fudayl was criticized, you see, when he made tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal, what did he do? He said, my tawbah is that I'm going to stay where? In Mecca. Now, that time was still a time of conquest within the Muslim Ummah. But Fudayl himself, he never partook in any wars. At that time, it was a common practice for the pious to partake in these conquests. And people started to criticize Fudayl, some of his friends as well. They said, why aren't you coming? And help us protect the Muslim lands and help us advance the cause of Islam. You should also do that as well. Fudayl, he heard the criticism and he stayed silent. So somebody started to criticize Fudayl. Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak was that man. Very softly and politely. So Fudayl ibn Iyad accepts the criticism, but he moves on and carries on. Why? Because his tawbah with Allah was what? And I have made my tawbah that I'm going to live in Mecca and die in Mecca and live therein forever and forever. Till today we know Fudayl is a righteous man even though he was criticized at that time. You don't have to defend yourself every single time, but hear people out. Maybe they have something right to say. Fudayl's front was spiritual development of the ummah. Fudayl's front was leaving behind a legacy of spirituality for the ummah. Fudayl's front was the hadith that he left behind for the ummah. Fudayl's front was the asceticism that he showed us by example for the ummah. Fudayl's front was all of these things. What you need to do and what I need to do is we need to ask ourselves, what is our front? What is it that we can do for the ummah? Some of us may be businessmen or women. We can donate for the sake of Allah Azza wa in great causes. Some of us may be prolific speakers. We can speak and, and, and we can raise the iman of people through that. Some of us may be people who happen to be great writers. We can write and defend the deen of Allah and spread the deen of Allah within that way. Some of us may have the ability, the digital skills, so we can protect the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal and advance the cause of Allah in that capacity. 
Some of us may be worshippers and that's what Allah has opened for us. So we worship Allah Azza wa Jal and even that is a great meaning that we can instill within the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After a long life of faith, after a long life of tawbah and repentance, but now Hudayl starts to become completely different yet again. So in his early life, he happened to be a man who was very sinful. Then because of his sins, he became very fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now as he's going to meet Allah Azza wa Jal, you see him flipping yet again, but towards a good direction also. He now turns towards hope in Allah Azza wa Jal. So they ask him, Oh Fudayl, what is this all about? Fudayl says, fear is better than hope so long as a person is still healthy. But when death comes his direction, then hope starts to become better. And this is in accordance with the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, in which the Prophet said, let not any of you die, except that he happens to have good thoughts with Allah Azza wa After 80 years approximately of living, he died in the year 187 after the hijrah of the Prophet Fudayl ibn Iyad, he came to a man in his dream. We know that from the tradition of Islam, we know that many, many scholars and pious people of the past, when they would pass away, one of the things that Allah Azza wa Jal would grant them is that Allah Azza wa Jal would give some people within society, and by the way, we see this still today as well, a dream through which they recognize the state of this individual. So Fudayl ibn Iyad, he came to someone in his dream and he said, Awsini, give me wasiyah of Fudayl. Fudayl said, you should stick to what? Your obligations. I have never been able to find anything like it. You see, now he has met Allah. And now he is telling us and he's leaving us in his legacy with this message that stick to your obligations. Stick to the fara'il. You see, each and every one of us, in reality, in essence, we are people that no matter how good we've gotten, we have some mistakes inside of us. Because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, all of you people, every single one of you, repent back to Allah azza wa jal. Regardless of their dis- differences, this is because that all children of Adam are people who make mistakes, and the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn back to Allah azza wa jal. 